the PCA main event, where dreams are realized, careers are made, and inspiration is born. Dominic Panker is the first ever Polish winner on the tour. Now, six await their chance to join the ranks of their heroes. Paradise Island plays host to the first big tournament of 2016, the PokerStars.com PCA main event. 928 players enter the doors of the Atlantis Resort and Casino, vying for a place at the final table. Now, just six remain. Only one will walk away with the prestigious title. We are pretty excited about today's final table. Pumped. It is a talented lineup with an impressive list of achievements and ambitions. Hard again, stat me. Well, we've got Tony Gregg. He has now made the final of this event three times. That's a first. We've got Vladimir Trinovsky, who has final tabled the super high roller, the high roller, and the main. A PCA final table triple crown. And then there's Toby Lewis. He's going for his second EPT title. A given, what about Dr. Randy? the neurosurgeon, he's now guaranteed more than five times his total tournament winnings. Well, it's poker, not brain surgery. Pretty impressive he can do both. But these five players all have to get through the current chip leader, Mike Watson. The Canadian pro has more than $8.3 million in live tournament winnings and an impressive high roller resume but victory today would be his ultimate achievement. Winning a big field main event is a little bit more special. You know, the super high rollers are a tough competition, but you know, such a big field would be a huge accomplishment. But Tony Gregg won't make it easy for him. The only player in history to make three PCA main event final tables. He's come sixth, he's come second, and now he feels destiny calling. This win would be huge. I think it's a little too storybook for me not to win. Not far behind is Vladimir Troinovsky. He's a veteran of the PCA who came second in the 2013 High Roller. And for some people, one bite of the cherry isn't enough. I won EPT Villamora in 2010. I've been trying a lot over the last five years to get one, but I uh, haven't really come that close. There's still a job to be done. And it's not done yet. Joining him is fellow Brit Philip McAllister, an online pro looking to make a name for himself on the live circuit. And finally, the rank outsider, 58-year-old Randy Kritzer, a neurosurgeon from North Carolina. He knows the odds are stacked against him. The final table lineup is superstars. It's like I've been playing Sandlot baseball and now they've thrown me into the World Series. They're all in a different league, but maybe the cards might be a bit of an equalizer. All six will need to give 100% if they want to take down the PCA 2016 main event. Well, the stage is set. The players have entered the arena for the final chapter of this year's PCA story. No one is short stacked at this final table. Mike Watson is the man to beat with Tony Gregg second in chips. Oh, uh, Tony's parents are here. They look nothing like my parents, not disappointed. This guy probably a bit disappointed he's not playing today. Matt Waxman just missed out on a seat at the final table, finishing in 10th place. Well, this is Mike Watson's rail. His girlfriend, Sarah, flanked by poker pros Justin Bonomo and Lucas Greenwood. But Toby Lewis's rail has a puppy. I want to hold the perpy. And there's this year's PCA Super High Roller champ, Bryn Kenny. Yep, yep, won a tournament here a week ago. No big deal. Are you guys playing here? Action is underway. Blinds are 40,000 to 80,000 with a 10,000 ante. Action on Toby Lewis. Now on chip leader Mike Watson. Folded to Vladimir Tronovsky. He's out. 
Got to Randy passes. Tony Gregg has aces in the small blind. Oh, hello. A cheeky just call. That's not standard. Check. Philip McAllister checks his option. But if you are going to be limping at all ever in the small blind, you should do it sometimes with aces. Oh, McAllister's flop top pair. This could spell trouble for him. It is a dry flop, so maybe that saves him a little. Yep. Check, check. Everyone's playing it slow. Check on the turn. Well, that's moistened things up a bit. <laughs> Moist. Now, Tony Gregg will try and get some value. 125,000. Pretty easy call spot, top pair. McAllister does call. And there's a four McAllister Rivers two pair. In the words of Ernest P. Worrell, ew. Tony Gregg continues to bet for value, 285,000. It's a value bet meant to get a call from a jack or a queen, obviously. McAllister's hand is more disguised than Jean Parmesan. Mm, aubergine Parmesan. Not the same thing. McAllister raises to 615,000. Oh, this is such a sick spot for Tony because his hand is way under rep, so he could definitely convince himself Phil is trying to bluff him off nothing, or he could even be value raising a worse hand. Tony Gregg has counted out the call. I'll never tell. I'll never tell. Greg makes the call. Oops. You know, it was a misstep by Tony, but the river raise was for like four big blinds, so it's not irreparable damage. I've been really impressed with Phil McAllister, and on day four he made a royal. That's always pretty cool to see. He's still the second shortest stack at the final table, but comfortable playing 3.9 million. And not the best start for Tony Gregg at his third PCA final table. That's incredible. I still can't get over that. Blind's now 50,000, 100,000 with a 10k ante. Action folded to Vlad Troynovsky. Now on Dr. Randy, who's got Queen 10. Dr. Randy. Randy! He's the table's everyman, if you consider someone who routinely performs brain surgery to be an everyman. He's raised it to 225,000. Bill McAllister with 8-7 off defends from the big. The flop brings top pair for Dr. Randy, an open-ended straight draw for McAllister. Randy's got a pretty easy decision to bet. It's been checked to him. That's a C-bet of 325,000. More than half pot. No small ball for this guy. All in. McAllister check raises all in. He shoves on Dr. Randy. The biggest of balls. Call. He calls as a 68% favorite. McAllister would have preferred a fold, but he's got equity against everything. Ah, uh, you got the 10 too. Seven outs for McAllister. Hearts though. Yeah. Not hearts, brains. The turn card is a heart. Oof, thank you. <laughs> that doubles McAllister's outs. Dr. Randy needs to dodge a 5, 10, or heart to survive. A heart on the river! Good game, Randy. <sighs> really nice Sorry to do that to you, man. That's the end of Dr. Randy. Wow, that was fast. Oh, runner, runner. Oh. I agree, Randy. It was a terrible movie. I saw it on a date. Woof. Randy, the world needs you. <sighs> out there. The first man out cashes for 154K. And Philip McAllister's on a heater. He's moved up to second on the leaderboard. Tryonovsky, the low man. I say low, he's playing 46 big blinds. Callister back in the action, folded to him on the button. He opens to 225,000 with Jack-8. Chip leader Mike Watson has Jack-5 in the big. He's going to defend this. 
you are correct. The flop gives Mike Watson top pair. Two pair for McAllister. Some chips are very likely to go in the middle. McAllister continues for 190,000. They both have enough chips to play this hand pretty straightforward. And Mike Watson's rail's been joined by Toodles from Hook. Look it up. Mike calls. The turn card is a seven. Well, that gives Watson a straight draw to go with top pair, but he's still a nine to one dog. He checks for a second time. Herper's gonna derp and better's gonna bet. Callister firing again, 380,000. I think there's only one way for Mike to play this. My guess is call now, maybe he's able to make a soul read and fold the river. Once again, he calls. The river's a five, no way Watson folds now. That's a horrible card for him. Rivering a worse two pair. Yeah, that's really bad. How much value can Philip McAllister extract here? Well, there is a four card straight out there, but I think both these hands are too strong to not go bet call. That's 730,000. And Watson calls. Top two. Phil McAllister running hotter than a pizza when you're really hungry. He adds another 1.6 million to his stack and he takes the chip lead. Good start. Running so good. <laughs> momentum is real. Momentum is real. Was the existence of momentum in question? Be beware of momentum. Philip McAllister set to become the first Brit since John Gale to win the PCA main event. Hello, my babies. Oh, Want to listen to more of my jokes and embarrassing stories about poker getting in the way? Subscribe to EGT Not Live on iTunes or download it from soundcloud.com slash EGT Not Live. There's guests, competitions, online dating. You can even get some behind-the-scenes gossip on the show you're watching right now. That's right, more layers than an advanced Rubik's Cube which has two layers, more layers than that. British pro Philip McAllister has continued his run of good fortune at the PokerStars.com PCA 2016 main event. Momentum is real. Beware of momentum. That momentum started on day four when the chip leader rivered the best hand in poker. So Tadeshi's all in with a set of queens, but there's still monster draw action on the side. The river card is the ace of hearts, a royal flush for McAllister. No way. Rubber is betting. It doesn't matter what his cards are. He can't win. All in. With his royal flush, McAllister shoves on Rubber. I know you're sick, but um, I don't know if you're that's that sick. Board. He's not that sick. Flip a coin. Literally. Probably best. Oh, look at this baller. Rubber lets it go. Pull to the flush? No, no king, king turn clubs, yeah? Royalized. Oh, Tadeshi was such a huge favorite when the chips went in. What a way to lose. Enjoy it, my friend. It may never happen again. With only five remaining, can McAllister ride that momentum to victory? Well, he's extended his chip lead even further. He has better than a two to one lead over Mike Watson, who's now second on the leaderboard. Mike under the gun here. Blind's now 61-20. And Watson has queens, he raises. Ace Jack for Vladimir Troinovsky. Man, I said it before and I'll say it again. If Vlad spoke better English, he'd be a superstar in the Western world. Troinovsky has re raised a three bet to 575,000. Folded around to the blinds. McAllister's out. As is Toby Lewis. Back on Mike Watson. 
Even though I know it's not true, it feels like Queens is a flip against Ace Jack. I can see Mike doing anything but folding. Watson elects to call. Hey. The flop. Is Jack 8 4. That's top pair for Vlad. Watson still ahead with his over pair. Action's been checked to the pre flop aggressor. I see no reason why Vlad wouldn't bet this. I mean, other than that he's up against Queens. 1.43 million in the middle. Vlad makes it 525,000. Now, if Mike knew what Vlad had, he would definitely raise. But he doesn't know, so he just calls. Correct. He doesn't want Vlad to run away. Turn card is the ten of clubs. The board gets straightier and flushier. Pretty bad card for both players. Watson checks. Their hands are actually very similar. Vlad checks behind. Six of diamonds on the river. Very safe river for Mike. Sure, some of the time he's going to be up against aces or kings and he'll get value cut. But not often enough to not take this spot. Roughly half pot, 1.25 million. And Vlad beats plenty of value bets and all bluffs, so a call here would be pretty reasonable. Trinovsky calls. Nice one, Mad Dog. Uh, pretty unlucky run out for Vlad. Trinovsky lost nearly 2.3 million in that hand. Not an insignificant percentage of his stack. I think he needs a minute. That's pretty rare for Vlad. We don't see him show this much emotion usually. Well, Mike Watson is closing the gap on Philip McAllister as he looks to follow in the footsteps of one of his heroes. Win the PCA main event now would be huge. You know, it's been so long since I final tabled a big main event, seven or eight years, I guess, since my last really big one. I think it'd be especially fitting to win it uh, 10 years after Steve Paul Ambrose won it. It was one of like my first poker friends and like one of the few people I'd ever really call like a mentor, I guess. Yeah, I'd love it. It would mean a lot to me. When Steve won the PCA in 2006, I was at Waterloo doing my masters at that point. I saw that he had won and he was in Waterloo, so I think both Mike McDonald and I kind of like stalked him down on like the poker forums online and ended up meeting him. And we all sort of started playing online together on the weekends and stuff. And that was like a very big point in my career where I started uh, making a big step towards, I like to think, being one of the better players. You know, he's still considered that whole period and that whole time, you know, the impact he had on myself as being really uh, important. He was very influential. You know, I would always wonder if he didn't win the PCA main event, things would have been really different. Who knows how it would have turned out. If Mike wins this in honor of Steve Paul Ambrose, we'll give him a second first name. Mike Mark Watson. I like it. We need to make that a thing. <laughs> so Toby Lewis just limped in the small with nines. Look at you, Toby Lewis, slow playing those nines, you little devil, you. Mike Watson checks his option with 9-7 and flops top pair. This could get a little bit messy. Top pair against an over pair. It's what just happened to Vlad. It's a pretty sweet flop for nines. Well, Toby Lewis continues to play it slow. He is checked. Mike Watson bets 200,000. Pretty good spot for a check raise. Noah Valancourt and Chris Mormon know what I'm talking about. There's the raise, 750,000. Fairly easy call for Mike. Toby didn't raise pre-flop, so he's generally gonna be semi-bluffing here or have a bad two pair. Mike calls. Turn card, three of spades. Tommy. 
Ole. Lewis shoves. Hey. Told you he knew what I was talking about. Looks like an easy fold to us, but Mike's still beating all semi bluffs, blocking other top pairs. It's hard for Toby to have an over pair. And after the check raise, he's getting some pretty good pot odds. He calls. It has to be nines even, right? Jesus. Couple of coolers for Mike Watson. This one with a much different result. Go, oh, yes. Fraser McIntyre and Ludovic Geilek railing Toby Lewis, who only has to fade a seven on the river to survive. Maximum sweat. Maximum effort. Home and drop. Yes! Come on! Toby's girlfriend, Brooke English. My son. Thank you. Significant blow to Mike Watson. As Toby Lewis gets the full double up. Toby played those nines a little tricky and it worked out well for him. Tough one for the mad dog. And speaking of dogs, it's London the puppy easy fella. Maria's boyfriend is right there. Poker plus pets, best TV show ever. Tony Gregg under the gun here with Ace Queen. Raise it to 350k. Folded around to the big blind. Vladimir Tronovsky, who's got six bigs. Poor Vlad. His hand is complete borscht, but he might also think he's so short and getting such good pot odds, he's got to see a flop. He defends. Vlad flops a flush draw. Brilliant. And shoves. Tony Gregg calls with top pair. Once the hearts come out, this is how it had to go. Vlad at risk and behind. I have a spades just for fun. Come on. Do not mess with Tony Gregg. He needs this. Ten of diamonds on the turn. Nine outs for Vladimir Tronovsky. Tronovsky looking for a heart. It's a club. Tronovsky out in fifth. Team Skate, Team Skate, Good luck. Thanks. Dude, Vlad, he is so good. He is always in there. He will win something big on this tour. He cashes for 208k. Thanks. Tony Gregg is back in it and getting good vibes from his friends on the rail, including Greg Merson. I met Tony in 2007, and then I moved in with him in 2008. Uh, back then, I was playing poker like 70 hours a week from like 5 p.m. to 5 a.m., and then go to sleep, wake up, go back, do the same thing. So he's one of the main reasons I am where I am today. So always rooting for him to do well, and it's nice to see him at another final table here. Jeez, Greg, long-winded much? We missed half the hand. Well, picking up the action here, Tony Greg limped the button. Toby Lewis got to see a free flop. Greg now ahead with top pair. And he's betting it. 215,000. A lot of back doors for Toby. He calls. On the turn, Lewis pairs his ace. He's now a nine to one favorite. Oh yeah, I forgot. He also had an ace draw. Greg betting again. 485k. This is a bona fide range merging. You don't see that very often. Still, easy call for Toby. Lewis calls. 1.9 million in the pot now as we go to the river. It's the nine of hearts. Tony Craig Rivers trips. Lewis checks for a third time. That turn bet put Tony in an excellent spot here. Just like nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition, nobody expects Tony to bet the turn with a nine. Here comes the third barrel, 790,000. Pretty strong. Toby's probably thinking flush or bluff. 
Dimping the bottom thing. It's killing me. Don't let them know it's working. So much pressure having that cutie on the rail. And your girlfriend. Tiny, tiny, tiny. Toby Lewis finds a fold. Nice fold, buddy. Love me a good fold. <laughs> what you have? Huh? What you have? A good hand. Did you folded it. Did you beat it straight? You're a straight. Maybe. A straight pair. Two in a row for Tony Gregg. Now up to 5.6 million. Well, if you fancy your chances on the tour, why not try qualifying for the next PCA at PokerStars.com? Four remain at the PokerStars.com PCA main event final table. Philip McAllister leads the pack, but momentum is with the tournament short stack, Tony Gregg. He's no stranger to the PCA, with no fewer than three final tables under his belt. Will this be the time that he finally takes home the title? My first big scorer in my poker career was here in 2009. I was just like a cash game player. And so when I got heads up, I didn't really care that much about winning or the title. I was just happy to secure such a huge score. Oh, no way! And I always look back and regret it. Greg can get you four or a queen right now. Otherwise, Nazari will be our champ. He cannot, and Puria Nazari is your 2009 PCA main event champion. Anthony Gregg coming in second place. I think a huge part of my success over the last few years is working on my mental game. Tournament poker is really tough emotionally. You can feel like you're the best player in the world one day and then, you know, you go a couple months and just nothing goes your way and then you start to wonder if you even know what you're doing. I started meditating and doing yoga and that has just been like invaluable, I think, when playing poker. So yeah, it'd just be nice to have another big score, especially at PCA, like where it all sort of started for me. Maybe it was better he finished second back in 09. Poya Nazari was never seen nor heard from ever again. Blinds are still 80, 160. Toby Lewis, aiming for his second EPT title here in the Bahamas. Raises under the gun with Ace King. Pocket nines for Tony Gregg. Gentlemen, start your engines. That's a three bet to 875,000. Philip McAllister has folded the big blind. At this stage, you're not folding Ace King. And you want to make sure you see all five cards with it. You ever heard the line, let God sort them out? Hello. Toby Lewis shoves on Tony Gregg. Cool. Who calls all in? Good luck, buddy. I feel like Tony Gregg runs pretty good in these situations. We've got a race on our hands. Maybe no chop heads up, though. Or harder, no, harder now, anyway. Could run out uh, five clubs, maybe. Ace King. Noah's not impressed. Tony Gregg is the player at risk here. He needs nines to hold. Toby, it's yours, yeah? Bold prediction from Fedor Holtz. Fedor hasn't been wrong at these. Yeah, he's normally not wrong. Yeah. Fedor. Nines holding. Toby Lewis looking for an ace or a king. Dumb way, <laughs> dumb way to play for thousands, hundred thousands. That's why we uh, play these things, right? Yeah, it's fun, right? <laughs> Gets the blood pumping. <laughs> Tony, Toby, Toby, Tony. Oh, hello. 
Where's this one? Straight draw. Straight draw. Why didn't I just spew it off with like Queen 10 or something? <laughs> 10 outs for Toby Lewis. What you got under there? I'll take a Barry G, please. Barry G. Lewis wants an ace on the river. King Urjack also works. Barry G request denied. Tony Gregg doubles up through Toby Lewis. Don't be sad, Rail. You have a puppy. Can't believe WWWB there, WWW held there. Sorry, guys. Aw, that's sad, but try to flip better, eh? So Tony Gregg has gone from tournament short stack to chip leader in one hand. And the blinds are up to 100,000, 200,000 with a 25,000 ante. By the way, is anyone going to mention the fact that Fedor Holtz was wrong? I guess you just did. But like McAllister with 9-6 of hearts on the button. Limps. More button limping being employed. King nine of spades for Toby Lewis. Hello. He shoves. Mike Watson has ace jack. I think Mike's got a reshove with this dynamic. Ace jack could easily be and is the best hand. All right. There's the reshove. McAllister folds. Toby Lewis at risk and behind. Toby's such a boy's name. You'd never have a prime minister, Toby. Poor guy lost the last one, and he was better off pre-flop then. Yeah, he's nearly a two-to-one underdog here. 10-6-3 flop, ace high holding. Five immediate outs for Toby Lewis. Still, all it takes is one pair for Toby to win this hand. Ah, <sighs> damn. It's fun and games, isn't it? The turn card. It's a king! I mean, I set a pair, but I may have spoken too soon. Watson can always re-get there. Well, Toby is set to double up, just has to fade a queen or an ace on the river. See how close I can get to it. The river. It's a queen is straight for Watson! Ouch. Toby Lewis eliminated. Good luck. I really feel bad about saying all I needed was a pair to win. I should not have said that. But seriously, where that puppy at? <sighs> Toby's fourth place finish worth $267,000. And after that hand, Mike Watson has a commanding chip lead. Greg and McAllister are playing fewer than 40 big blinds each. And I guess there won't be a two-time champion as Toby Lewis exits the arena. Uh, if you'd offered me fourth at the start of the tournament, I would have snapped your hand off. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great result. It hurts a little bit at the moment, but it's nice to get 2016 off to a good start, and hopefully that continues. So we're three-handed at the PCA main event final table. A7 for Philip McAllister. He raises from the button. Mike Watson has king-queen suited in the small blind. Love a good three bet with Queen suited. Re raises to 1.2 million. Tony Gregg folds. So back on McAllister. Oh, yeah, Grip said, get at that popcorn. Leave no kernel unmouthed. Did he just regurgitate into the packet? Yeah, I don't know what's happening back there. What's McAllister thinking about here? I think there's an argument for calling and for folding. And then there's also this. He's pulling back his original bet. And putting out a four bet to just over two million. Mike's got a hand that's pretty impossible to fold in this situation. He is usually going to have way too much equity. It's suited, and it makes a pretty good top pair. McAllister has effectively bet a third of his stack. He's got four million behind. All, right. All you can eat! And McAllister folds! 
So about four bet folding with a 30 or chips in the pot, don't do that. Mike Watson's rail getting very excited. As he consolidates his chip lead. His girlfriend Sarah chatting to Mama Greenwood. An action on Tony Gregg on the button. McAllister in the small blind. Has Jax. He completes. Phil McAllister, more like Trappy McTrappy. 8-7 suited for Mike Watson. Will Mike Watson fall in? Fall in? Yes, he will. Cool. Got him. McAllister, roughly an 80% favorite for a double up here. The good news for Mike is that 7-8 suited is a decent cracker hand. I love the way you're trying to put a positive spin on it. <laughs> but they're suited. So a great spot for McAllister. Oh, hang on a moment. Watson's flopped a pair and a flush draw. Yeah, I think the dealer just put a positive spin on it. He's now a slight statistical favorite. And that'll do it for McAllister. Okay, man. Nice playing with you. He's out in third. Yeah. Nice playing with you, bro. Good luck. Phil McAllister was a pretty interesting dude. Love to see more of him on the tour. And now just two remain. Tony Gregg and Mike Watson are heads up. And we're about to crown a new PCA champion. Tony Gregg and Mike Watson. Two names synonymous with world-class poker. Each has more than $8 million in live tournament winnings, so they're no strangers to heads up. But Mike Watson's had his fair share of second place finishes recently. I've lost a lot of tournaments heads up in the last couple of years, unfortunately. You know, I'm certainly not like a heads up specialist. Tony Gregg seems to always do well here, so that's uh, not gonna be easy at all. He's a tricky guy. Tony's been in this exact spot before. Seven years on, He's more confident. My heads up game has improved since 2009 just because I've been playing so many more tournaments. I just feel very confident. I think I've been playing insanely well. I feel pretty good. Gonna try to win. <laughs> We're heads up in the PokerStars.com PCA main event. And a deal has been agreed. Watson taking slightly more because he has the chip lead. They're still playing for 33K and the trophy. They may have taken some of the financial risk out of the remaining purse, but if you think that makes the PCA title worth any less, you've had too many Bahama Mamas. Tony Gregg raising the button with sevens. Mike Watson with king seven in the big. He defends. Just the one over card for Mike Watson. And Mike hits his one live card to make top pair. Are you serious? Yes. Action checked to Tony Gregg, who continues to 350,000. Tony's batting into a bad board for a few reasons. He can protect against getting bluffed later. Maybe fold out some hands with equity against him. He is not folding out top pair, however. Watson calls. Turn card to nine. And when Tony gets called there, I think he's going to shut it down a lot. Play this hand like a bluff catcher. Action goes check, check. Tony Gregg drawing to one out. Doesn't hit. Mike Watson may go for value here. 1.8 million in the middle. Yeah, he should feel pretty confident in this king. He bets a million straight. Now, I did say Tony was going to play this as a bluff catcher. I'm not sure how many bluffs there are to be caught here. I think... Uh, no, he's not going to lay it down. He calls. And sees he's beat. And that was a tilt whistle. I do not think he was too happy with that call. And it's the Mike Watson fan club from Saskatoon, everyone. Mike extends his chip lead. Opening up nearly a 2-1 to -one advantage over his opponent. Blind still 125, 250. 
Ace Queen for Tony Gregg. Okay. Raise this to half a million. How mad would you be if I insta folded? I don't think my Watson's folding King Jack here. Now we've got some serious heads up hands here. Things have the potential to escalate. He brings a knife, you bring a gun. Watson re raises. It's a three bet to 1.35 million. He sends one of yours to the hospital, you send one of his to the morgue. Somehow you're actually worse at accents than Sean Connery. And that's saying something. That was just how I normally speak. Tony Gregg responds with a four bet to 2.875 million. Now you've got King Jack in your face with a four bet. Luckily, Mike's got the chips to just call and try to hit a pair. That's right, everyone. That's a legit play in poker. Call and try to hit a pair. It's fine. Just because it's what you would do doesn't make it wrong. Mike does call, and we have a huge pot already. There's nearly six million in the middle. Yum, yum. Oh, Watson outflops Greg. Top pair. Amazing flop for King Jack. Mike checks. This pot is huge, and Tony's overs are going to be good a lot, so he cannot give a free card. He's set to continue. 1.65 million. All in. Mike Watson check raises all in. He shoves on Tony Gregg. And that is the appropriate face. It's kind of gross. And that is going to open up a vast gap between these two players. Mike did an awesome job of protecting his equity in that hand. And Tony probably likes his chances to climb back from 25 big blinds and then take his equity in that spot. Right now, Mike Watson has a commanding chip lead. It's 23 million versus 4.5 million. And blinds are up to 150, 300. Is Tony Gregg going to have another runner-up finish in the PCA? He's called here with ace eight. Mike Watson checks his option with seven four off. Well, the flop brings top pair for Greg. Flush and straight draws for Watson. It's practically a coin flip. You would not have expected there to be a collision on the flop between these two hands, but somehow the poker gods provide. Tony Gregg bets 400,000. Seems like a pretty obvious spot for a just call. Why call when you can raise 1.2 million from Watson? This raise puts Mike in a really awkward spot if Tony shoves. He'll pretty much have to call, and it's a weak hand as far as calling hands go. Let's see how Tony responds. All in. Greg's going with it. Oh, Mikey. What have you done? I think I know what Mike has to do, but don't forget, he's making a decision for one of the biggest titles in poker. Hard for him to know that it's pretty much 50-50 here. That it would be correct for him to call. He does call! Here we go. Let's flip that coin. This is a good one to see for you. A really good one. <laughs> really good one. Mike has 12 outs twice. This is why they make a deal. I can't really picture you holding up 7-4 off for the winner's photo, you know? <laughs> it's <like> too dirty. <laughs> That's a great hand. You need a prettier hand than that. Gotta build my image. <laughs> if Mike hits, we have a winner. Just don't turn me dead like you did to uh, Philip. That's true. Offsuit 9. Just. Yeah, you can turn a pair or something. He does turn a pair! Well dealt. <laughs> Mike Watson now has 16 cards he can hit to win the PCA. Fours, 
fives, sevens, and hearts all working for him. That's a lot of outs. Is it too many? The river is a heart, and that means it's over. Seven four in the winner's photo. Thank you, Gary. Tony Gregg is a runner up again. Mike Watson wins the PCA 2016 main event. Two very deserving players made it to heads up, and this one just went Watson's way. In 2008, he won a WPT. In 2016, he takes down an EPT. So three final tables, but still no win for Tony Gregg. He gets 612K as per the deal. Mike Watson takes the title, trophy, and 728 grand. Mike Watson, I heard that uh, both you and Mike McDonald started playing the PCA because you saw Steve Paul Ambrose. How does it feel to beat your buddy Mike McDonald to the finish line? Anytime you can get one up on Timex, it's something you gotta savor. It doesn't happen very often, right? <laughs> it really doesn't. You know, it used to happen every now and then, and now he just wins everything, and it's just any chance you get, it's, uh, it's a big one. And now that you finally accomplished that goal of, you know, matching your idol, Steve Paul Ambrose, how does that feel? Uh, yeah, I think it's really amazing that I won the tournament 10 years after he did, because, you know, him winning and then myself and Mike McDonald, you know, meeting him in Waterloo, learning a lot of poker with those guys was a really big, uh, really big building block in my career. How nice the guy is Mike Watson, right? <laughs> is he the greatest? Let's give a big round of applause for our PCA 2016 main event champion. the button for while I'm working my butt to becoming somebody in the door back and forth all my thoughts turn into Labradors and it takes a lot of time to try and match the force what's the point of skill if you lack the voice to express it talent moving with time becoming 24 7 probably be put away if I had any more weapons any more luggage any more thoughts stuck in the deep end either winning or losing you could keep it if it's even it's crazy out there so I'll take man. you through the storm those rainy days those windy Moments, those freezing nights, I'll take you through the storm. When it's all coming down, the clouds are coming down, the stars are coming down. I'll take you through the storm. I'll take you through the storm. 